The Apple Dumpling Gang. What do I do for this? Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about The Apple Dumpling Gang. The Apple Dumpling Gang is a 1975 theatrical release. It's directed by Norman Tokar, cinematography by Frank Phillips, it's edited by Ray Galou, and it's written by Don Tate. It's based off a book of the same name by Jack Bickman. It is about three orphans, parent deaths, who are inherited by a man who does not want them, and then they strike gold. The film stars Bill Bixby, Susan Clark, Don Knotts, Tim Conway, Clay O'Brien, Brad Savage, and Stacey Manning. Bill Bixby is most known for My Favorite Martian, The Courtship of Eddie's Father, The Magician, and The Incredible Hulk series. He also directed a lot of Blossom episodes. He was so good in this movie, you guys. His subtle reactions, his ability to say things without saying them, all really, really great. Susan Clark is most known for Coogan's Bluff, Colossus, The Foreman Project, and Webster. Don Knotts is most known for The Andy Griffith Show, for which he won five Emmys. He's also known for The Ghost of Mr. Chicken, The Incredible Mr. Limpet, Three's Company. He's incredibly famous. He has a lot of TV credits. He's also very famous for working with Tim Conway. I spoke all about Tim Conway in the video about the world's greatest athlete. The link will be in the description. If you want to learn all about Tim Conway, please go watch that video. I spoke all about Clay O'Brien in the video about One Little Indian, so if you want to learn all about Clay O'Brien, go watch the video about One Little Indian. The link will be in the description. Brad Savage is most known for being in Red Dawn. He went on to do small TV cameos as well as small film roles, and currently he's in a celebrity band called Band From TV that includes Hugh Laurie. Stacey Manning only ever did this. She has no other film or TV credits. I'm actually going to start off my notes by showing you guys a clip because the movie started with a bang editing wise. There is a poker game going on and a man comes in to make a deal with someone at the poker table and the deal and the poker game continue simultaneously, so there's multitasking in the scene, and the edit and the deliveries of all the actors is on point and it's very quick. Kind of reminds me of West Wing a little bit. You know how West Wing, there's always like more than one conversation going on and you have to keep up and it's really complicated and intense. This is a lot less intense than West Wing, but it's got that vibe and it's like the beginning inspiration for that kind of quick, a lot going on at one time scene style. So I'm really excited to show you guys this scene because I was really excited to watch something of more than one thing happening in a scene. Maybe I can make it up to you. Two pairs, best two dollars. <laughs> like I say, I'm expecting valuables on the stage. I'm in, like what? A full thing is a person wouldn't leave lying around without somebody responsible like yourself to keep an eye on. There's a game going on, Winkle. There's a two. And raise your five. Oh, now five. you couldn't have hit an inside straight again. I'll call you. <laughs> If you'll claim them for me, I'll make it worth your while. Besides repaying what I charge you for the marshal's horse. The mayor raised five. It's just so I come back, Donovan. Will you wear or not? Uh, here's five on account if you can use it. I don't know how you came by five dollars, but I'll apply it to your loan at the bank. It's a deal? It's a deal. I'm in. Thanks, Donovan. Thanks. You won't forget. I won't forget. Thanks. All right, let's see him. Hit it again! Oh, <laughs> I don't even believe that. <laughs> Welcome to Quake City, Mr. Donovan. The cinematography in the film was also fantastic. There was a ton of movement. I know I go on and on about the movement, but justified movement in a storytelling setting is so good, you guys. When you follow a character in the appropriate moment at the appropriate time to where the camera movement goes unnoticed, it's everything, okay? And there were a lot of great camera movements in the film, so I just have to say yes. As I said at the beginning of the video, these three are orphans. They explicitly say both their parents passed away, so we have two more parent deaths. Donovan is a man who has three children thrust upon him. He has no relation to these kids. He agreed to pick up some valuables for their uncle and didn't realize the valuables were children, so now these children are under his care. And the film is about how he has no interest in being a father, but then grows to wanting them. And that is the kind of stuff I've been wanting. You guys, I talk about relationships all the time, like in One Little Indian or The Castaway Cowboy, how James Garner was the father figure coming in and ended up wanting the kid and they never really super focused on building that relationship. We get a little bit more in this. It's like baby steps. We're getting a little bit more each time. Like in Escape to Witch Mountain, how Jason ended up wanting those kids, but that was just like a snap 180 all of a sudden he wanted them we didn't see that growth and that want and that bonding which is what i want to see because i want to be along for that ride i want to be like yes y'all deserve each other this is so great you found each other you made a new family it's what i want 
and this movie does a little bit better job than Escape to Witch Mountain, so we're on the express to better relationships and showing those relationships. He does semi do a 180 about wanting them, but we do see the little moments that get him to loving them, but it's also he's trying to get rid of them so much of the film, and then there's just a lot of other stories going on in the movie that we don't get to see as much of it as I would like, so it is kind of abrupt how quickly he's like, yeah, no, I want to keep them when he wanted to get rid of them so badly. So it's believable. I bought it. I was very in. I didn't cry or anything about it, which, you know, if it was a good family story, I'd probably cry because I'm a mess when it comes to that kind of stuff. But um, overall, I we are moving much closer to better relationships. There were some really great scenes. There was one scene in particular that Bill Bixby like outacted everyone, but he was only in the scene with children. So I guess I can't say that, but they were, you know, putting it on him. Like they wanted to stay with him. They obviously were like, no, we like him, even though he can be kind of a turd sometimes. We like him better than everyone else in this town, which I don't blame them because everyone else in the town was kind of not good. Um, so they kept like trying to be really impressive to him and wanting to keep him and everything. So, um, it kind of starts to get to Donovan and that's a really great scene. I have some pictures. I think I might have a clip. I'm not 100% sure, but it's just really, really good. Theodore and Amos are 100% husbands. They are very gay. You can watch the movie or rewatch the movie. I haven't seen it in a while and listen to them and watch them carefully and try to fight me. You will lose because you will see the evidence I'm talking about. They're 100% husbands. Also Dusty, not straight. She's definitely bisexual. Although there's not another woman in the film for me to completely be 100% about that. She's definitely bisexual. That's all I'm saying. I know I already spoke about the cinematography, but I did want to mention specifically the cave-in scene. When the cave-in happens, their light is out. It's very dark and there's some fog in the background. Well, it's dust from the cave-in, obviously, but it's fog. And you can see the outline of the kids. It's very, very incredible and well done cinematography. I had to be in the dark to see it, but it was really well done and I was really impressed. I do want to kind of touch on a missed opportunity. I think the Apple Dumpling Gang totally like fell flat on, which was the middle child, Brad Savage's character, didn't like to be touched by anyone, like a hug, pat on the shoulder, pat on the head, whatever. He did not like to be touched, which is totally cool. And Donovan respected that. Once he learned that, he was like, oh yeah, like I won't touch him, which is so great, 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 great. If someone does not want you to touch them, don't touch them. Consent is key, everybody. But anyway, so the kid didn't want to be touched. And I thought a great proof of them wanting him to be their dad and bonding with him would be like, Brad Savage's character lets him pat him on the shoulder or something, or even gives him a hug. Like it was Brad Savage character's choice. You know, that would have been so huge and proof that they bonded and everything. And like, I really thought that was gonna happen because of how much they set up that Brad Savage's character didn't like to be touched. So I was a little disappointed. Like I totally love and respect that they had him not liking to be touched and Donovan respected that. That's huge because if children don't wanna be touched, don't force it. Don't force it on anyone, anyone. If no one wants to be touched, don't touch them. Don't be mean, that's horrible. Consent is key, everybody no means no, which is, everyone should know that. But anyway, I thought it'd be so great if Brad Savage's character opened up enough to loving Donovan and like running and hugging him or something that would've been such like a, oh my gosh, moment and I would've cried, it would've been great, but they missed that opportunity and I'm sad about it. Guys, there's a horse chase, can't be a car chase because cars didn't exist at the time that this movie is placed, but the horses and buckies existed. And you're dang right, there was a chase. <laughs> the running and kissing Donovan in the water was hilarious. The noise <laughs> Donovan makes as he falls backwards into the water was everything. And then they make out for a good chunk of time. And I was like, whoa, this is a Disney movie, guys. Calm down. I was so pleased with the ending of this film. At first, I thought it was just gonna be the five of them becoming a family. Donovan, Dusty, and the three kids. I thought all of them were becoming a family, which was very predictable. I expected that from the beginning. And that's great. I was very happy that that was the ending. But then I got even happier when they ran into Theodore and Amos and Theodore and Amos were like, oh, well, we just like thought or whatever. And they were like, get on. And they included them in their family. So then they're a big family of seven and my whole heart melted. And I was very, very happy about that. That's all I have for the Apple Dumpling Gang. Overall, it was a really heartwarming story. However, I cannot ignore racism and sexism and there was a good chunk of it in the film. The way the Chinese were portrayed was incredibly racist and inappropriate. They were in some kind of workshop switch up. Thank God they weren't inside with like poor conditions. They were outside at least, but they're broken English. At least they were portrayed by Asian people. I don't know if they were portrayed all by Chinese people, but they were portrayed by Asian people, which is better than white people. 
step up for my people. However, the way they were portrayed was stereotypical and racist and that's not okay. And the sexism in the film was also a big downer. Dusty is the only grown adult woman in the film and there's a toddler woman. <laughs> she counts, but Dusty's the only grown woman and they treat her in the fictional universe pretty uh, sexistly. She has a lot of duties that technically aren't feminine, but she gets picked on for that. So it's pretty sexist. I'm gonna give it five apple dumplings out of 10 and it's getting a five because it was technically amazing and the part of the story that was good was really good. It would get a higher score if it didn't have racism and sexism in it. And I want to reiterate and enforce that racism and sexism are never okay. I do not condone them. They're not good ever. Our total movie count is our parent death toll is. <laughs> Our current count is still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put out videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe. I don't know charge of you are, so you do you. And don't be the uncle about it. All really, really great. I killed that.